Hey everybody and welcome back to another video on individual behavior for organizational behavior and this topic is on organizational citizenship. So as always I want to begin with a small definition of organizational citizenship and so the textbook definition is various forms of cooperation and helpfulness to support others that support the organization's social and psychological contexts. And again, this is very important to remember that these are various forms of cooperation and helpfulness to others, not to oneself, but to other people in the organization. And so when we look at individuals, we're really looking at people who are helping other individuals or other people with barriers that they may be facing, with scheduling problems, or even just how to create and maintain a solid schedule, especially when they're managing multiple projects, to develop empathy towards one another or to coach one another through difficult situations. The other one is also to share resources, uh, whether that's resources that someone has built themselves or has taken the time to accumulate for themselves. Are they willing to share it with other individuals? The degree to which an individual participates in these four activities towards other individuals is a good indication of how they sit within organizational citizenship. Now, when we look at organizations themselves, we would say something like this, that those who have a high degree of organizational citizenship are really cognizant. They're aware of the organization's public image. Also, they're also willing to innovate beyond expectation, meaning sometimes that they'll take projects on for no other reason than to think that there is a solution to be found and maybe there just hasn't been enough time dedicated towards it. Or maybe they will volunteer to help out with some innovative project because they, they wanna be a part of the process. Also, there's this degree of voluntary attendance and this is one of the first indicators to a lot of leaders as to how well their people are feeling this idea of organizational citizenship. How much do they belong to the organization? One of the key indicators is how well do they volunteer to be a part of certain things, especially when it's outside of working hours. And the last thing that we want to keep in mind when we look at organizations with regards to organizational citizenship of its constituents is the relevancy that each one of those constituents has with the organization's culture, meaning does the culture mean anything to them? Does a positive culture mean anything to them? Are they looking towards building upon a culture of positivity and inclusiveness and professional development and even personal development. These again, these are four things that are really key indicators as to how people are engaging in their organizational citizenship. And so moving on is that some companies look at organizational citizenship as more of the norm rather than above and beyond. And in some cases, this idea of corporate citizenship will play a role in some people's performance reviews, especially if they're moving up into middle or higher management. Because again, we know that leaders lead best by role modeling. And so if they are role modeling a positive behavior and a positive outlook towards organizational citizenship, more than likely their constituents will do the same. And so some benefits to this idea of organizational citizenship is one, sharing is caring. And that may sound a little silly at first, but it, it carries with it the very implicit reality that if you're willing to share what you have, especially if you've worked on this off the side of your desk, on the weekends, on your holidays, on some downtime, but you're still willing to share that information and those resources with others, then you have this deep sense of organizational citizenship and you want others to be involved in that as well. We also know that when people engage in positive organizational citizenship, it helps teams perform better because it builds into the idea of uh, team trust and team cohesion. And it also adds to social identities of people in the organization, not only those who give, but those who receive, because it, it means that if those who are giving, like we've said a few times, it proves that they have a certain level or depth of organizational citizenship, that they feel a sense of ownership and being a part of this great organization. And those receiving those benefits feel now included with the group and they begin to be drawn closer into what it means to actually be an active and positive participant within the organization. However, we also know that 
exercising organizational citizenship comes with some challenges. One, it takes time to build this mentality, this framework, this perspective. Uh, people are, are hard to lead and people bring experiences and, and thoughts and frameworks and lenses themselves. So it just takes time to build this into the fabric, into the culture of, of an organization. And, and the one reason why it takes time to build this is because there's potential value conflicts. Not everybody has the same value system. Not everybody has the same reward system. And so it takes time to work that out within the organization. And finally, trust builds trust. And that's risky to, to get people people to trust one another, somebody has to begin trusting somebody because we often will withhold a, a, a certain level of trust because we want to know that the other person is trustworthy. And it becomes this catch-22 of, well, I'm only going to trust him if he will trust me, or I'm only going to trust her if she trusts me. And sometimes we get caught in that circle. So it's risky and it's a bold step, but more often than not, when we trust our people, they will begin to trust us when there's consistency and integrity involved in that. So it really leads us to the big question now of how might you find a sense of rhythm or balance between organizational citizenship and your task performances. And if you can't remember what the task performances are, I'll include a link to go back and look at the video so that you can watch that and then work through this question on your own. But how do you find a sense of rhythm or balance between organizational citizenship and the idea of individual task performance? And, in f and a follow-up question to that is, does company politics have an effect on your decision? That would be an interesting question to, to, to dig into more. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, please leave them in the comments section below. I'd be happy to address them uh, and be on the lookout for more videos like this coming your way. Thanks for taking the time. Take care.